crossing Australia by bicycle, 7,051 km donation project. Completion of Koshi Bridge in Nepal. Korean dance Hanyang Wu performed in Israel. Planting trees in Mongolian desert. Waste materials transformed into fashion pieces. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Chong Semi. Have you ever imagined a flying car? A Japanese automaker recently filed a patent in the United States for what it calls a stackable wing for an air car. A flying car is something that is seen in science fiction movies. The idea and development of it has been around for a long time, and now it seems like we're getting close to seeing one. With a flying car, the world will become a smaller place, and the distance between people and even countries will become shorter. Let's see how far the technology of connecting people and countries will develop in the future. And here's our first story of the day. Have you heard of making a donation by cycling? It's a fundraising event, and basically, sponsors donate a certain amount of money for a certain distance you cover on your bike. In order to help children in Africa, three Korean students have come together to cross 7,051 kilometers of the Australian continent by bike. Let's take a look at how they're doing it. Three young Korean students in uniform are riding their bikes. They are college students who are carrying out a donation project in collaboration with a Korean charity organization. For each kilometer they cover, 1,000 Korean won will go toward a fund for African children. From the Gold Coast in the east of Australia to Perth in the west, the total journey is 7,051 kilometers, crossing half of the Australian continent. The students had a lot of difficulties in getting financially ready for the journey. They also faced some safety problems and struggled with the unpredictable winter weather in Australia. Here, but there were people who supported their journey and helped them along the way. A company provided them with necessary equipment, such as bicycles and uniforms, and there were people who arranged accommodations for them and even made a leaflet that introduces their project. The three friends' bicycle journey to help African children's dreams come true will continue for three months until the end of September. Now let's move on to our next story. Nepal is still recovering from the aftermath of the huge earthquake that hit the country this year. But there's also good news. Recently, a bridge has been built over the Koshi River that runs through central and eastern part of Nepal, and it's said to bring benefits to their local residents in many ways. And the technology of Korean companies was behind the successful construction of this bridge. Let's take a look. A bridge has been built over the Koshi River that runs through central and east Nepal. Residents are busy taking pictures on this festive day. There had been only one bridge connecting central and east Nepal. But in 2008, the bridge got destroyed by floods, and all logistics were halted for six months. 
At the time, local residents had to cross the Indian border to reach central and western Nepal. Even after the bridge was restored, people living in the upper region of the Koshi River had to use a boat because the bridge was located in the downstream area near the Indian border. Uh, <coughs> The Koshi Bridge was built over the past four years with an investment of 7 billion Korean won. It's the biggest bridge constructed by the Nepalese. The Nepalese government and people waited long for the bridge, but they say that without the technology and know-how provided by the Korean companies, it's possible the bridge might not be in existence today. Korea, Korea has been helping, helping us a lot in our development and why I thank, I, I, I express my thanks to the Korean government as well as the people. The Koshi Bridge is now expected to facilitate logistics between central and east Nepal and also help residents travel easily across their land. Now moving on to our next story. Hallyangmu is a traditional Korean dance that expresses a man's dignity and experiences. The dance was recently performed in Israel by a young Korean choreographer who added his own interpretation and style. Let's take a look at how the performance was received by the international audience. A Korean dance performance was held at Suzanne Daela Center also known as the Mecca of Modern Dance in Israel. Beautiful yet powerful movements are performed to the beat. Traditional Korean dance called Hanyangmu is having its debut in Israel. Hanyangmu is a solo improvisation that expresses a man's dignity and experiences, and the dance is reborn by choreographer Kim Jae-sung. 이제 어린 아이의 아기에서 탄생서부터 이제 한 남자가 나이가 들어서 늙어가는 과정까지 그렇게 이제 내용은 구성되어 있고요. With this dance, Kim was awarded the first prize in solo dance performance at the Seoul International Choreography Festival. 제가 결혼하게 될때 이제 어머니에게 제가 이제 아들에서 이제 한 여자의 또 남. Kim reinterpreted Hayang Mu by adding his own style and emotion. Israeli dance officials thought highly of that and invited him to give a performance in Israel. The Israeli audience responded to the Korean dance Hayangmu with great applause. A young choreographer's performance of Hayangmu has introduced the beauty of traditional Korean dance to the world. Now moving on to our next story. There are young Koreans who have left behind their studies for a year or two to go to Mongolia for volunteer work. Their mission is to plant trees in parched Mongolian land. Their efforts are paying off as the land is starting to show some green here and there. Let's take a look. This is Erdin, about an hour away from the capital Ulaanbaatar. Its nickname is the Village of the Sky. The vast sandy plain touches the blue sky above. It's a wasted land without a well to quench the animal's thirst. Just a few trees that are over 300 years old are barely maintaining their lives. Desertification is taking place very quickly here in Erdin. Two young Koreans came to the village earlier this year, wishing for a small miracle. Their day begins with digging in the ground. 
they do it together with the village residents. They have to dig a hole of 40 centimeters deep to plant a seedling. At first it was hard for the young ladies to even shovel properly on such hard ground. What's more important than planting these trees is to manage and care for them. The main job for the two members is to water the trees every day so that they grow well. After more than two years of plucking out weeds in the dusty weather, you'll finally see a healthy tree with green leaves. Many young Koreans have come to this village for volunteer work over the past five years. So far, they have planted 108,000 trees. They stayed here for between one and three years. Thanks to their hard work, the survival rate of the trees are over 80%. A greenhouse was built in order to help the village residents support themselves. Fresh vegetables are being grown there, such as lettuce, white radishes, and pumpkins. For the village people who can no longer live as nomads due to climate change, a new job has been created. They are now building their own green village as they tend to trees and crops. Many people are still skeptical about whether planting trees in such a vast land will help. But nature is honest. Green sprouts are slowly appearing here and there in this desert land. A foolish man removes the mountains. Just like this saying goes, the hard work and determination of these young Koreans will make the seeds of hope grow in the Mongolian desert. And here is our last story of the day. In New Zealand, students are using their imagination to create art out of waste materials that we see in our daily lives. Their works were showcased at a special fashion show, which celebrated its eighth anniversary this year. And the event is said to help the youth understand the importance of environmental problems. Let's take a look. High school student Beth, whose dream is to become a designer, is making a skirt on a mannequin. She attaches each of the long pieces of material one by one. But the material that she's using is quite extraordinary. So it's made out of, uh, is it VHS? It's made out of VHS tape, which is uh, the old video recorders, and it's the tape on the inside of it that holds all the film. And we uh, thought it was really pretty when it moved in the light. Another student folds an empty snack bag to make a flower decoration. They are normally thrown away as trash, but Monica uses them as material for her artwork. Old shoes at the, um, in the rubbish bin and then just take out this from the old shoe. They are students at Selwyn College, a secondary school located in Auckland, New Zealand. They are making their final touches for a special fashion show. The event is unlike any other fashion show. The students will get higher scores for using more ruined and torn trash. It's a fashion show that introduces the importance of upcycling, which is the process of transforming waste into products of value. Well, it was part of the school's curriculum to, for us to do it, and so we tried it out, and we really enjoyed it last year, but uh, we didn't really know what we were getting into, so we tried again this year, and we really enjoy it as well, so it should be good. The upcycling fashion show has begun. Including students at Selwyn College, more than 12,000 middle and high school students in Auckland participated in this year's event. The show was divided into seven different sections, including outer space, global environment, and fantasy monsters. Oh, the show today was fantastic, brilliant. I was really impressed. I didn't, can't believe how well they did. You know, they're just little guys, and they're just bringing up fantastic stuff. Yep. Celebrating its 8th anniversary this year, the Upcycling Fashion Show first began after Auckland accepted an idea submitted by a non-profit environmental organization. 
Mainly uh, made from recycled materials. So, um, uh, yeah, mainly trash. Uh, some other rules are there's, there can't be any pointy objects, so no kind of glass or anything sharp that could injure your model. In Auckland, about 1.2 million tonnes of household and industrial waste are being sent to a landfill site every year. Around 10% is recycled, but the total amount of waste in the city continues to rise. One of the reasons for holding such fashion shows is to let the youth understand how serious environmental and waste problems are. And it starts them thinking about what is rubbish and where does it go, what can we do with it outside of just sending it to landfill. Without thinking much, we throw away trash every day. But it's now time for us to look back on our habits and consider any new opportunities to recycle them. I hope you enjoy the stories that we shared today on Going Global. The world is currently struggling through a series of unsolved problems, the migrant crisis in the EU, and natural disasters such as the recent earthquake in Chile. How are you seeing these global issues? Some places in the world undergo constant struggles, while other places are relatively safer and more peaceful. Globalization has brought the world closer than ever before, but psychologically, we're still far from each other. If we start paying more attention to others around us, we'll become better neighbors in this global community. Going Global will be back next week with more exciting and fascinating stories from all around the world. Thank you for watching.